I'll call the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for May 25th, 1999, into order. And uh, let me note for the record that the board is short one member. Uh, Amory Houghton has departed our shores and moved to uh, Yarmouth, I believe it is. And uh, I regret I wasn't here for the uh, ovation that I guess you gave him last time because he he's done a great job for the town. Um, so we're still short a member, and Tom LaCroix, who I believe will be here but will be late, leaves us uh, down to five members. And uh, so we'll just do the best we can and plunge on, and I hope there aren't too many recusals. The uh, first item of business is to approve the minutes of the last meeting, April 27th, 1999. And uh, let me, go ahead. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Before we formally do that, let me note that uh, there's a handwritten entry uh, correction. And since I'm not sure who wrote it, I want it to I be did. acknowledged. That's why I was afraid. Uh, it's on page two at the bottom in the last paragraph. Um, and if properly edited, it would read as follows. That is when he wrote the letter, the home daycare application was submitted and a 30-day waiting period has to take place prior to issuance of a home daycare permit. Strike the words conditional use. Uh, any other uh, things that came to people's attention before we vote on this? There's also a correction on page 9. I page 9, okay. At the top. Oh, right, I didn't pick up on that, actually. Uh, and I guess I'm not sure what the, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, first paragraph on top of page nine uh, relating to the Cleary application, one, two, three, fourth line down, talks about a 10 foot by 24 inch addition. And in fact, it was probably meant to be 10 by 24 feet. Either that or they're gonna <clears throat> sleep standing up. <laughs> uh, anything else that people picked up on? I have some questions about uh, the St. Albans application just because I wasn't here, and, uh, but I assume we'll deal with that when we get to it because the minutes are correct as far as I know. If there's nothing else, we've had a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving these minutes? Any opposed? I see none. They are approved. Next item on the agenda is under old business to hear the request of St. Albans Episcopal Church. 885 Shore Road, tax map U04, lot 64, for a conditional use permit for a daycare facility. Is there someone Mr. here to represent? Mr. Yeah. Chairman, before we get into this, I'd like to recuse myself uh, because of future um, business considerations with oh. St. Albans down there. I was going to say, last time we had a problem with you was because you're a Catholic. Now you're an Episcopalian? <laughs> <laughs> There may, there may be a possible <laughs> conflict down the road, so I don't okay. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Fristashi uh, feels the need to recuse himself. Um, we still have a quorum, so we'll go with that. Um, now, if, as I understand it, this was tabled at the last meeting, and uh, is there a motion to remove it from the table? So moved. Second? Sure. All those... Uh, all those in favor of removing it from the table? Uh, there's no objection. It is off the table. I guess the question I had before we dive into the facts here, and maybe we'll get to this as we make the presentation, but just from reading the minutes, I have to admit I was confused as to why we were tabling it as opposed to withdrawing it, or I, I couldn't see what was coming next. Hopefully you're going to tell me that. Why don't you, whoever is representing the church, please stand. Would you uh, go to the microphone, please, because we're recording and we've got to be able to hear you. Plus that, you're on TV, so uh, <laughs> probably, this, probably your left ear. But uh. Uh, My name is Don Bonoff, and I'm the senior warden and chairman of the building committee at St. Albans. I was not here for the last presentation. We were represented by uh, Nancy Barbet of Barbet Architects and Preservation and uh, also other members of the committee. Uh, 
my understanding of, of the reason for the tabling was for a request for further information as to what our plans were for a, uh, a nursery school uh, at the church. And uh, so I'm here to try to, tar to clarify that. I have some materials if we need any review of the, the property or the design of the proposed uh, uh, the modification to the church. But essentially, uh, in recent years, we have been approached several times by organizations wanting to use the church facility for a nursery school. Uh, the most recent was in 1998, uh, when uh, a group headed up by Nancy Bielan came to us and, and uh, wanted to see how, what we would, uh, how we would uh, respond to a request to use our facilities. Uh, that plan at that point in time was, was dropped on their standpoint because we did not have what they felt were adequate uh, facilities, particularly with a, an outside play area that was uh, fenced in or restrained and was adequate in size for the, for the, uh, the nursery school. Uh, they had plans for about 12 children at that time in the nursery school. Uh, we subsequently, in discussion, as we planned for this expansion of our parish hall and school facilities, that our classrooms were down below grade, and we were not in, we were not in accord with the ordinances with regard to uh, children six and underneath. In other words, uh, younger children would have to have egress and access at grade level. This is one of the reasons that we went ahead and went through our redesign, proposed redesign of our parish hall and church school facility. But for that reason, uh, and for inadequacy maybe of our classrooms in terms of space, uh, they decided that they would not proceed with the discussions and negotiations with us. However, based on that instance and prior instances of interest in uh, putting a church school in our facility, we decided if we were going forward with a request for expansion of our church to include uh, a possibility, a future possibility of a church school, either through a nonprofit organization, an outside organization outside of the church, or the possibility of uh, within St. Albans uh, having a nursery school. Now I think in, in reality that uh, it is unlikely in the near future, when I say the near future in the next four to five years that there would be any consideration at St. Albans of our uh, developing our own nursery school. But on the basis that there seems to be an interest in facilities for nursery school, uh, facilities that we wanted to include that uh, in our package. And we feel that our proposed expansion would provide the facilities we think that would be of interest to uh, uh, an outside nursery school provider. At the present time, our proposed construction <coughs> schedule, if approved uh, by you folks and by the zoning board, would call for completion of construction in September of 2000. Uh, and uh, it, it clearly, would, nothing could happen during this period of construction and, and shortly thereafter because of the fact we'd, we'd be in the midst of, of a significant uh, change. At the same time, uh, our rector uh, has left to take a position with the diocesan offices in Portland, and we are now in a search process. So we don't have a rector, and it's not likely we'll have one until the first quarter of 2000. So these two significant factors would mean that any consideration of, of an internal or external request for nursery school facilities would not be feasible probably until, I would think, until 2001 or thereafter. But our thought was that we would in include this possibility uh, in our proposal so that we would not have to come back uh, in a couple of years to, to the, the board with a, a new proposal for a, a nursery school or a proposed nursery school. Thank you. Um, again, because I wasn't here at the last meeting and I just can go on the minutes. Uh, I guess I'm having a hard time, and the reason I raised the question earlier is that the provision in the ordinance, which uh, was quoted to you in the minutes, uh, so I, I presume at the meeting, uh, section F, uh, C, I guess it is, mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, uh, conditions for conditional use, uh, under duration, 
one of the criteria is that it uh, would not be appropriate if you fail to initiate the operation or conduct of the use within one year from the date of the, of the approval. And I've just heard you repeat what I read, which is there's no way you're going to be in operation within a year. No. And uh, so uh, if the only issue here is $75 for a, a permit fee, it, it, I can't support that. I'm sorry. but. No, I, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that. I, yeah. And I think that uh, we understood that since it had been tabled that our request for the building expansion itself uh, might be held up until we had resolved this. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, it, it's, we would not be in any way possible to uh, yeah. st start a school within that period. And certainly a reapplication at a later date is not uh, of consequence to us. Nor would it be my understanding, Mr. Smith can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the other approvals that you were granted at the last meeting for the construction part of it would be affected by? Well, it, it was, I guess it was my understanding that, that, that you would like to incorporate it into the plan to go to the planning board and, and by getting approval through this board that that, that could work through that and then come back later <coughs> for renewal if it had to be. Otherwise, if you don't include it now, then I'm not so sure that you know exactly what you'd have for a plan. Is that? Was that part of the reason? Yeah, I think that's part of the reason. We think that our facility, in terms of the number of classrooms we have, the play yard, an fenced and closed play yard, uh, the kitchen, a nurse, indoor nursery with bathroom facilities uh, designed for children and so on, would be suitable for a facility of up to 15 children. Uh, so I think we're in a position where we could meet those requirements. Uh, and I thought if it could be incorporated, I wasn't quite sure of if, uh, if we would be hindered in going ahead with the planning board uh, by any, any uh, unresolved uh, issues or questions here at the zoning board. Well, my understanding is that if the board were comfortable with the factual information that's been presented, and I'm not sure if they are or not, given that you're still a long way from details, right. but we're talking about the user primarily, the board could grant that permit, but you would, you would have to understand that approval, I mean, but you would have to understand that it's going to expire, and, in years. It's, and you'll have to come back and start right. basically from scratch. Uh, uh, if the, the permit expires, do we start the process over again, or can we get an extension of that uh, permit? I, I don't read the ordinance as providing for that. And uh, again, I stand to be corrected, but it's pretty clear that, and I think the intention here is that, uh, of the writers, is that things can change over time, and if you don't actually come to develop and uh, to, to use, excuse me, this facility for that purpose two years from now, or if, for example, you bring in an outside operator, uh, the neighbors need to have an opportunity to understand that person's qualifications right. and the kind of program they're going to run right. in terms of how it affects the neighborhood and the traffic and so on and so forth. So if you grant a permit that's basically good forever, you cut off that opportunity, that opportunity. for public involvement. I understand. So the question is, what's the most efficient way to do this? Uh, with that stricter, and uh, I know I don't want to make your evening here not worthwhile, and I certainly I'm going to shut up in a second and ask the board members to go further with questions, but uh, I'm just trying to get myself up to speed in this yeah. process and let you know where I'm coming from. And I must say that based on what I know at the moment, I don't have any problem with use conceptually in that location. Uh, it's more the details and the procedural criteria that I'm concerned about. I want to think some more about here. So let me shut up and uh, <laughs> see if other board members have additional questions. You all participated in the last discussion. So. I don't have any problems, as you said, with it conceptually. I think it was a, simply a matter that um, we knew you weren't going to yeah. make use of the permit within the, one year. The so we felt yeah. like it was sort of a futile and meaningless gesture to uh, grant the application. So we asked that you table it and then bring it off the table at a point that you were within 12 months of actually operating the daycare. Well, I, I think uh, then I, w I, w I would say that, and I don't know how procedurally we do it, that we would, would withdraw our consideration of nursery school because we're not going to be in a 12-month period able to present the board with a specific plan uh, and or the possibility of an outside operator. One of, one of the reasons that we asked you to table it was to save you $75, actually, because yeah. we understood that by we could leave it on the table indefinitely you could come back at which time, which time you're actually ready to uh, exercise the permit and bring it off the table without costing you any additional money. 
I, ha I have to say that I'm not sure if that's either uh, appropriate within our procedures. It certainly isn't something I would agree to well, as, as a voting member. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have anything against the Episcopal saving money. Don't trust <laughs> don't <laughs> But I just think it's inappropriate to leave something on the table for perhaps two years, uh, given what you said. Uh, and and if we were talking about $7,500, I might feel worse about it. But for $75, I, I think you could pass the plate on one row and they'd probably come up with it. So. As a point of information, uh, the zoning law could change within two years, too. That's another, that's a point I have. Uh, my understanding, though, was that you wanted to design the, your, the, the reconstructed area with this nursery school in mind. So, and then there was expense associated with that, and, but not having a permit that, that investment in construction costs might be uh, lost if, in fact, the permit were not granted. So I, I'm somewhat sympathetic to the applicant's predicament as well to design the, the new facility uh, with the nursery school in mind, but doesn't want to start it within the requisite time. And uh, I don't know quite how to, how to deal with that. Uh, with that well, problem I think all we our constraints. I think all we can do is just you can, you can read the board that's sitting here tonight. Who knows who's going to be here next year, or a year from now, or yeah, two years sure. from now? But the board is here tonight. And as I understand it, most of the neighbors, if not all the neighbors in the area, had no major objection, just a few questions no. about some things. And so I think you can take that to the, to the planning team and, and say, you know, we seem to be all right here. Your location uh, is such that you're in pretty good shape, but, but there's no guarantees. And again, as you said earlier, the, the, the details aren't there for who's going to run it, how it's going to be run, what the hours are going to be, et cetera, at sure. nauseam. So, it's really not fair to ask the board to go way out on a limb for two years down the road. And in a way, it's not fair to yourselves because you're not sure exactly what you'll get into. So Yeah. I think we feel comfortable because our church school, in terms of numbers and facilities to accommodate 75 students in a church school, is, is more than enough to handle the requirements of 12 to 15 uh, children in a, in a nursery school. Well, there's no question about that, and, that, and that's why you got your construction permits, and I don't think anybody has any question about yeah. those issues. There's just some unanswered things right. that, that it, it, were it not for the year restriction in our ordinance, uh, which I happen to think is a good one, by the way, uh, we could probably do this with a little more information. But I, I think right now, for me personally, and I'm not speaking for the board here, uh, the timing's not terrific on this. No, I, uh, is there is there anyone who wants to express a contrary opinion except you, Tom? Uh, <laughs> uh, if not, then you've indicated a willingness to withdraw and yes, come I, back when the time comes. Yeah, unless uh, Bruce, um, and, I, and not having been there myself at the last meeting, unless there's some nuances that I uh, don't understand. Uh, I think it was more, from what I understood, it was more to, to try to lock you into something or you, that you felt comfortable with, yes. um, which may have a little merit um, a year from now when you come back and say, well, I have nothing changed, the audience hasn't changed, and therefore we'd like to have, you know, a reapproval. I mean, that would probably be the only thing that might be, that might might be, a be beneficial. Yeah. Um, if you're going to head in that direction, let me just also ask Mr. Smith if when the minutes are completed, two, three weeks down the road, why don't you send them a copy of the minutes so they'll at least have the positive comments from the board and the, yes. and the specific reason why we are uncomfortable having nothing to do with the proposal in front of us. Well, I'm not saying he should do that. I'm just saying that's probably the only merit for going forth now. No, no, I, I, I was, I'm sorry, you were saying something different. I was responding to the withdrawal oh, okay. discussion. Okay. Uh, we're planned to, to, we already had a planning workshop with the, the planning board. And uh, our plan is to go before them uh, in their meeting in June. Uh, and I, I take it then there's no uh, objection as far as zoning board is concerned in terms of any for us to proceed. Uh, None with whatsoever. Zoning board approval. None whatsoever. And the minutes concerning reflect that. I think that's okay. everything right. we've said has been positive, but a little short of time and information about the details. Yeah. Which you don't have, so we No, we, uh, we don't have that and, and won't have that. solve that problem. All right. So uh, I take it then that there is a formal request from the applicant to withdraw. I, we will I would withdraw. appreciate it if you could follow that up with a letter to Mr. Smith just so sure. we have it for the record. Okay. Uh, but for now, we'll consider that. Ron, does any, does, can I get a motion from a board member to accept the uh, request for withdrawal of the application? So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of that, if there's no discussion. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. <laughs> Move on to the next item of business, which is uh, into the new business category. And it's to hear the request of Town Manager McGovern in reference to the approval of the home daycare center at 4 Evergreen Circle, tax map U3, 30, excuse me, U35, lot 551, to reconsider condition two. Uh, incidentally, the applicant's name is Rhonda Downer. And uh, that condition relates to the hours of play in the cul-de-sac being limited from uh, to, to the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, Mr. Frustashi returns. Mr. Uh, Keneally, you had recused yourself at the last meeting. I assume you'll do the same on this one. So Mr. Keneally is excused for the discussion. Um, and uh, Mr. McGovern, since you raised the issue, please. There's a letter in front of the board members that also came in your packet dated April 30th to uh, Rhonda Downer, the applicant, from uh, Mr. McGovern. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I read with interest the, the minutes of the last zoning board meeting. It's obvious that you were, you were trying to help out the applicant. You were also trying to address some concerns of the residents in the area, and I think everyone would appreciate that. The particular concern with the motion, the way you adopted it, is that it very implicitly appears to give permission to use the cul-de-sac as a playground. Uh, the town, as a matter of long policy, never gives permission for, for activities, particularly ongoing activities or structures or placements uh, within the town right-of-way. For, for instances, you might see a lot of basketball hoops along the road, you might see fences, you see stone walls. All of those are there in, 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 in accordance with with the legal uh, phraseology of sufferance, which means we suffer their presence, but we don't specifically give permission for them. The reason that is, is essentially to protect the town's liability. Obviously, things are going to go on the right of way, but we don't want to be in the position that we gave specific permission uh, for that to occur. Therefore, you know, in this particular instance, if a child was hurt, uh, we'd be concerned that uh, an attorney or uh, someone may come forward uh, stating that you know this was in essence in part the town's liability for what occurred because the town had given permission for the cul-de-sac to be used as a playground and did not take proper precautions thereof. So it, it's a minor issue, and you know the, the request for consideration is simply on that condition and that condition alone. And uh, you know my sense is that you know based on the spirit of what was said, uh, I haven't spoken directly with the applicant, but I know from Mr. Smith that you know certainly that that want to adhere to the understanding of the limitations that the, the, that the residents in the area desired, but without the specific provision uh, uh, in your conditional approval uh, indicating that there is permission. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Just for the board's sake, uh, the condition that you added, if you didn't pick up on it already, is at the bottom of page six in your minutes from April 27th. And it reads as follows, Mr. Fristacci moved that the hours of play in the cul-de-sac be limited to 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mr. Cronin seconded the amendment. There was a vote of four to one in favor. Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Ellican was opposed, and the amendment was passed. Uh, questions for Mr. McGovern? Mike? Can I take it that you would also like uh, modification to the second? Uh, I don't have it. Two conditions. Do you refresh my memory what it is, Mr. Uh, the, the, the final condition is that uh, no child be allowed to play unsupervised in the cul-de-sac. It's obviously a, a related condition. It, it, well, it was, you know, one was voted four to one, the other three. They, they were separate. They were voted on separately. Right. I think that there would have to be two. Would you agree that there would have to be modifications to each? I, I think it would be helpful. It, it, the, the condition number two clearly seemed to give permission, while uh, you know, I'm not sure that this, the condition you've referenced actually gives permission. It does state that if there's, there's folks out there that they need to be supervised. I think on the safe side, it would, 
it would be wise to, to uh, eliminate both conditions uh, because obviously the, the original applicant uh, running the daycare, they will be careful to ensure that uh, safety occurs. And I'm, I'm, I don't know of any daycare that would have folks, even with this quiet street, uh, anyone out uh, on the street itself unsupervised. So. Would you be comfortable with a provision to the effect, uh, uh, I'm trying to state this, in, in a negative way, that uh, play on the pull this act specifically prohibited before uh, nine and, uh, and after five? No, I think you fall into the same uh, interpretation that, that that means that it that it is permission during those other hours. Can you think of an effective way? I guess if, if we could, I'd, procedurally, I'd just like not to get into solutions to the problem until the board's agreed to reconsider. Uh, I asked Mr. McGovern to present it just so you understand why, why it's an issue uh, before we vote to reconsider. And if the board chooses to do that, then we will move on to the next step, which is where you're heading, Bob. Um, Move to reconsider. Second. And you voted in favor, I'm correct? I, I was You, um, you did not vote in favor of that motion, so you can't move to reconsider. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fristash? I've seen the error of my way, <laughs> so I will make a motion we reconsider this. Is there a second? Okay. Mr. Cronin moves. All those in favor of, uh, move, of moving to reconsider this move? <clears throat> now we're on the table. Uh, before I come back to Mr. Cronin, is there anyone else that has a, a question for the town manager? Let's deal with these one at a time. I think Tom uh, Leprat is quite correct to point out that, that at least uh, that th uh, fourth item, condition number four, skirts the same problem, not quite as directly, but it uh, hadn't, hadn't struck me that way, Tom, but I think you're right. That reads. more direct. Is that reads. Child, yeah. can play if they're supervised. Yeah. Uh, but let's deal with number three first, and then we'll deal with number four separately. Um, the item is on the table. The uh, directions you were heading on number three, Mr. Cronin, do you want to? Uh, well, I'm wondering if uh, it's stated in a positive sense. I'm trying to read the exact language over here. Uh, as we approved it. Bottom of page six. Uh, yeah. uh, just for the record, uh, Mr. Chair, it is condition number two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's item it, number three on the, on the uh, minutes, uh, but it's condition number two? Correct. Okay, thank you. I'm more well, sympathetic to my, my own view that, that, that the children should be prohibited from errors open to vehicular traffic, but, uh, uh, which I think would solve the problem. I don't know how I can satisfy the how we can satisfy Mr. Govern's, McGovern's concern and, and not place some sort of limitations. Uh, and limitation is also a delimiter, too, so we should just scratch the whole thing. I'm listening to other thoughts, open to other, other ideas on the matter. Uh, anybody else have another idea? Or, or as Mr. Cronin suggests, is the only alternative just to uh, remove that limitation so that there's no misunderstanding about the town's liability. I don't feel the creativity bubbling, uh, <laughs> bubbling here. Go ahead. I, I, don't, I don't have new ideas. I was opposed to it in the first place because I felt that it, it condoned play in the cul-de-sac when clearly that wasn't the intention of the operator. Um, there, uh, we did have considerable discussion about fencing and um, I, I think the board's concern about uh, traffic and safety were, were heard by the applicant. And I, I, um, I don't think this is necessary to have in there and still have the children protected. Mm. Um, is the applicant here? No. It's no? interesting. Because um, I would have a question or two for or she here. Um, so, in effect, you would like to see it removed for other reasons than the ones that are brought tonight, even uh, before we got to this point. So, uh, in the absence of other suggestions, it's not a resolve this problem with a positive one, and I don't have one either. So, uh, then I would suggest a motion to uh, remove that would be appropriate. Uh, before we do that, I want to ask if there's anybody else in the audience that has anything to say on this on this item. If not, 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we get on to a vote, can I ask the uh, code enforcement oh, sure. officer? Has a fence been installed? As yes. It has been installed. Fine. It's a three foot high um, wired fence. Okay, so the other condition, the other concern that we had uh, has been met as far as the fenced area so that little children can't get, get out over and through? Well, it's three foot high. It's a wired fence with, with uh, driven stakes. Um, well, I mean, the, we were quite adamant about that, and we charged really you to, to assure us that, that it was... Well, it's pretty hard for me to me to tell you that a kid can't get out of any fence. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I can only do so much. The fence seems adequate to keep the kids within a contained area under supervision, or at least somebody watching occasionally. I, I don't know beyond that what I could do to control that situation. Well, my concern last month, and it still is a concern, that that. Uh, that of the, the, the uh, children's safety, and hopefully uh, they won't play in the cul-de-sac on a regular basis, and that they would play in the fenced area. Obviously, that's why the fenced area is required of, of daycares and nurseries. Um, I'd, maybe we should just say uh, absolutely no playing in the cul-de-sac, period. Now, I made, I made the motion last last month to exclude play, not to include play, to exclude play uh, during traffic hours as a compromise, but uh, hearing the, the, uh, the concerns uh, immediately after I made the motion last, last month and, and again tonight, um, I, I feel strongly about putting some language in that, that uh, discourages playing in the cul-de-sac. Anyone else want to address that comment? I mean, I, that's another way of certainly of addressing Mr. McGovern's uh, concerns and uh, doing it in a, in a uh, an affirmative way rather than a, although it's a negative result for the applicant, uh, rather than a I got omission way. Yes. A couple comments. Uh, one. I'm not sure how constitutional that is, and, and if it is constitutional and the board does uh, make that a condition, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to enforce that or police that. Uh, it would be almost impossible. Well, I think if the neighbors complain that the children are out running unsupervised in the cul-de-sac and people are really scared about backing their cars up, I think that's grounds for revocation of a permit. Uh, I'm trying to find the – where's the requisite – where's the standards for home daycare? On what page? <clears throat> I don't know what, what to address there. Mr. Chairman, I have another meeting at 7.30 across Street of Public Safety. I hope if I leave that won't be interpreted as disinterest in uh, uh, your discussion. Well, it will, but we won't say till after you leave. <laughs> no, of course not. Thank you for coming uh, personally to address us, and we appreciate it. Uh, before he leaves, anybody hot questions for Mr. McGovern on this? Go ahead. Thanks. I mean, one of the provisions is the fenced play area will be provided with a minimum of 75 square feet per child, page 181, Article 8. Now, what is the sense of having a provision for a fenced out to a play area if you're going to permit them to play outside of it? To me, clearly the intent of the ordinance is to have a contained, safe area for children to play in. So it, I don't see... My, my motion failed last time for lack of a second, but the idea of prohibiting the children from as a condition of operating this is that she does not allow the children to play in the area open to vehicular traffic sounds to me eminently reasonable and, and enforceable. If neighbors can play, the children are running in this street, uh, what would we say? We say the person is irresponsible. You can't operate uh, a daycare center and allow the children to play in the street. So I don't, I don't understand the constitutional issues that, that have been raised. I, I see it as clearly the intent of the ordinance to provide uh, to make a constraint that a, that, a, that a safe play area be provided. So I'm, I'm willing to raise my, uh, my original motion again to prohibit the children from uh, being allowed to play in, a, uh, uh, in an area open to vehicular traffic. 
Is there a second? <coughs> Excuse me, second for that motion this time. I'll second that this time. It's open for discussion. Keeping in mind that we're talking here, as I understand it, about five-year-olds and younger. Is that that's correct, isn't it? So uh, I'm not sure what constitutional rights <laughs> apply here, but the, the certainly five-year-olds being encouraged to play in the street is not exactly good business practice. If I mean, imagine if this woman who lived on Route 77 and she said, "Oh well, I want the kids to be able to play in the street," you'd say, "Wait a minute, that's crazy. You can't do that." Now, is it because it's a cul-de-sac area that we're willing to shade these provisions in them? The neighbors expressed concern about this, and uh, I think they have uh, a reasonable basis. Yeah. Mr. Just, Front. Just so I understand, we're, we're not proposing that kids can't play in the cul-de-sac. The proposal is that she can't operate her business, which is the minding of children, in the cul-de-sac. And I, I don't see any constitutional problem. I mean, there yeah. might be other problems, but I don't see any constitutional problem with telling someone you can't operate a business in the middle of the street. That, you know, there's always uh, restrictions placed on operating business and public property. I, I, I recall uh, the applicant's um, point about constitutional issues being that she takes the children out for walks in the neighborhood and she was concerned that this um, restriction would be construed as that she couldn't do that when she thought that public ways were public ways and that she could do that with certainly with safety with supervision um, there is a difference between taking a walk in the neighborhood and having children play for a prolonged period of time on a public way, though, and it seems to me that that's what we're struggling with. Basically, what I hear everybody saying is you don't want the cul-de-sac to be a playground substitute for a proper fenced controlled area. Uh, any other discussion on this issue? I, I, as a matter of interpretation, I don't think the, the, the condition as stated who prohibit uh, the applicant from uh, taking children for walks in the neighborhood. I think playing in the cul-de-sac uh, clearly implies the ongoing activities <coughs> in this area open to vehicular traffic uh, and not walking through it. So uh, there may be fine lines there, but I, I, don't, I don't think in the main there's going to be much dispute between taking a walk and, uh, and, uh, and play activity. Well, if, if I here by comments and or lack of comments, uh, consensus arising that uh, that the intent here is to drop condition number two uh, and replace it with a condition something like the following that would prohibit uh, prolonged play activities among uh, by the children in the cul-de-sac uh, as an ordinary part of the business or something to that effect. Is that where we're heading? And if so, can somebody put that into a proper motion and uh, toss it out? Don't we have a motion on the floor? Yeah. I know that, that, that a play, if you want to use the word extended play, be prohibited in areas open to vehicular traffic. I believe that's what the, uh, I moved in Mr. Frischotti, Frischotti, uh seconded. Okay. Just, can I just a point? Um, I'm a little concerned that, that um, getting beyond the realm of condition two that we may have a problem of notification because I didn't send notifications out to, to her or the abutters in regards to opening the whole thing up for reconsideration or parts of that beyond the condition number two. So I think if the board chooses to do that, that's fine, but I think probably we ought to properly notify. You mean to say that the applicant wasn't notified that this was going to, to be this, up for? To the context of condition number two. Um, beyond that, there may be a concern. Maybe there isn't, but yeah. um, I, I just need to raise that issue. Well, I'll have to leave that to you because I'm not sure what standards you use for that. I would have thought that Mr. McGovern's letter and your subsequent conversation with her would have put her on notice that uh, this issue I was just on. I wanted to bring it up. But if, you know, if you're concerned that that's because you're the one that puts out the ads and everything and you have a better sense of what's required. So if you think we're going to get in hot water, I'll certainly advise, I'll take I, that I advice. 
We need to change tapes, Alice. It's still around. It's still around. Yeah, but we could always ask for a reconsideration. And uh, as far as I know, no, in, no new information is, is, is coming to the floor here. Yeah. Uh, that the public part of the hearing was closed and was up for the board's discussion based upon the information we received then. Well, as I understand the advice we got from the town attorney, which is pretty well built into the rules in any event, uh, I'm reading from the rule now. A vote to reconsider uh, must occur within 30 days. I'm paraphrasing here. The board may conduct additional hearings and receive additional evidence and testimony. Uh, so I, I think we're open to do this, but, but what Bruce is raising is a notice question. Well, I mean, it does specifically say that while public uh, notice of the meeting itself is, of course, required, the additional notice requirements for mailing individuals, notices to property owners is not required. So that's what I went by. But mm. um, I'm just concerned that, that if we if we start opening that up, that maybe that should happen. I don't know. Mm. That's the board's call, not mine. Well, it would be my judgment subject to the board overruling me that given, number one, that the letter from Mr. McGovern specifically raised it for this meeting, uh, that letter addressed to the applicant, and secondly, I believe, Mr. Smith, I'm correct in saying after your conversation with me th three weeks ago that you were going to follow up and, and speak with the applicant again. Just uh, the, so the applicant she, was aware that, that, that so that she's certainly been notified. That request uh, was going to be made. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say then that we can go ahead and act on this and um, <coughs> and there's a motion on the floor. Is there any uh, further discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, uh, all those in favor of the motion? Anybody opposed to the motion? Okay. One, two, three, two. The motion carries three to two again. And the new condition basically uh, prohibits using the cul-de-sac for a playground, but not access and egress during the course of the business day. Uh, the next item is number four on the uh, minutes, top of page seven. Uh, is that condition number three, I assume? I don't have yes. the copy of that in front of me. That's correct. Uh, and it reads as follows. Mr. Houghton moved that no child be allowed to play unsupervised in the cul-de-sac. Mr. Cronin seconded the amendment. There was a vote of three to two in favor. The amendment passed. Uh, and Mr. McGovern has indicated that this uh, Condition as worded creates a problem as well. Is there a motion to reconsider? I'll move to reconsider it. Second. Is, is there a second? Who is allowed to second the motion? Anybody. That, uh, well, I, it, vote of three to two. Uh, so those people who, uh, well, anybody can second it. I'm sorry. It just have to be on the opposing side to, or the. the favoring side to move it. Uh, anybody can second it. Uh, and it's moved and seconded, and uh, it's on the floor for discussion. Uh, Mr. McGovern has left, and I assume that uh, there's no further discussion of that part of the issue. Uh, there's two ways to look at this from my point of view. One is that having acted as we did in the previous condition, that this one's now moot. Uh, or any alternative, you could rephrase it into something positive, which is to say nobody is allowed to play unsupervised Period. outside of the uh, house or, you know, fenced-in area. And... Uh, Can I suggest we talk, it's just no, allowed to be allowed, no child be allowed to play unsupervised? Well, that, that's a little... It, it bothers me a little bit, Bob, just because it, it, uh, it's now getting into how you run your playground within your controlled area rather than, uh, you know, how it affects the public. And that, that bothers me a bit. Uh, I mean, I, as a parent, I may not want my kid unsupervised in the play yard, but uh, in the backyard, but that's another, that's not our problem, I don't think. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you clearly have your own opinion on it, but that's my observation. Chairman, Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Pratt. I think that if we just vote to withdraw it, the concerns expressed in that condition are already covered by what was just voted on, and therefore I would just move to withdraw it. 
I'll agree. second. I cannot replace it with anything. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Discussion of that motion. Motion would be to withdraw condition three and uh, rely on condition two, which is a prohibition uh, to take care of the problem. No further discussion. All those in favor of that motion? That passes uh, with everyone voting in favor. Change your tape. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is to hear the appeal of Dr. George Gordon, 10 Hunts Point Road, tax map U38, lot 1-12 for a rear property line variance of 13 feet, no inches, from the required 30 feet and a left side property line variance of 9 feet from the required 30 feet to make an existing deck legal. But, excuse me, is Dr. Gordon or someone to represent him here? Please. I'm not sure what I should do. Just tell us what you're trying to do so we get it on the record and we can ask you any questions that may ha we may have. Well, what happened was when we had our land surveyed fairly recently, we found that the deck was not in compliance. When we built the deck back in the 80s, we, we thought we were in compliance. We had a building permit, and I did not know it was not in compliance until roughly the time I spoke to um, Bruce Smith. And so... In order to make it compliant, we came up with this proposal, and we're asking you to <clears throat> give us a variance so we can make it legal. I must say, your place was easy to find, right at the end of the road with a big for sale sign. So. Right. <laughs> Sometimes have that problem. Uh, are there questions for Dr. Gordon? Each has a, you each have a copy of the plan and uh, his written request. Did you receive a variance uh, to build a deck initially? Or? You know, I, I really can't answer that because <laughs> I don't know what took place. We couldn't really find out exactly what took place, but we definitely, the deck was on the original blueprint of the house when we built it back in 82, and then we got building permit in whatever years it was. And so I'm not, unaware that we weren't in compliance. How did you discover that you're not in compliance? Did we had the, the land bank, survey. Class A survey. It was pardon? You, you, a class A survey was done, or class I'm not B sure survey. what a class A survey is. That's uh, that survey. I assume this survey was required by the bank uh, in order, or by a bank or somebody, in order to be sure that if you had a buyer that it would not have It was have just to make everything smooth. Smooth. Yeah. <clears throat> Better to find it now than when you got somebody on the hook. And, uh... Bruce, is this a Class A survey? Or? Yes. Okay. Any other questions for Dr. Gordon? Let's go. Mr. Fertassi, go ahead. Yeah. My question is to uh, Code Enforcement Officer. Go ahead. Bruce, when you went back, when he came in for the, uh, for the variance, did you go back through the building permits and, and see what was presented at the time of the construction of the deck? There was no mention of the variance from the applicant, so we, we never checked to see what? if it was a variance. It was, it was brought forward that there was a building permit in the file that was issued uh, in 1982 for a house and deck in, 1980, in 1988 they still hadn't exercised the right to do the deck uh, they came back and, and asked for another permit the court officer chose to to date that as if it was under the 82 standards for the deck to be built in 88 why I don't know because e either 82 or 88 uh, setbacks do not work so it, it wouldn't have helped the applicant either way. The site plan that's in the file that was accompanying the building permit was, had no dimensions on it to, to property lines whatsoever. So I don't know how the determination was made, but it was made and the building permit was issued. So it was a combination of errors that, that this deck got built uh, in nonconformance. Well, you can say that, but I, I do remember and I told Bruce back when we got the deck, when we built the deck, there's a question and it was determined that the deck was within the 
right amount of feet at that time based on what, what we had proposed in 82 because we had the blueprints and the site survey and everything was allegedly in order at that time. Did the plan that was provided in 1982 show the deck in the same configuration that exists right it now? Wasn't, we didn't change it at all. We've never changed it. Because we wanted to make it a little bigger in 86, but we were not, we didn't because of the, whatever was determined at that time. So when it was built, I, I understood it to be everything fine, perfect, and did not know there was any kind of a problem. It, it's only a, when you look at it, it's only a, you know, a section like this across one end of the deck, and I'm not quite sure what it is on the side. A few feet, is that what it is, Bruce, on the side? It's 17 feet on the side and uh, right. Let's see, 20, what it would mean 20, if you, 21 feet. Yeah, you subtract the deck, it would only be a few feet at the, on the perimeter. So it isn't really a lot of area on the deck. You need a variant, property line variance of 13 feet from the required right. 30 feet on the, on the rear and a left side property line variance of 9 feet from the required 30 feet on the, on the uh, side. Any other questions for the applicant? So when you built the deck in 88, you didn't get another building permit? Yes, we do. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to understand. And, and that was approved without a variance? The building permit was approved as if it was still under the 82 permit issue, mm -hmm. which makes no sense, but that's yeah, the way right, it was right. done. And, well, that was, that effect, that makes no and there is a site plan in there, but there's no scale and there's no dimensions on the site plan. That's all I have in the record. And no the, set, the setback in 82 was what? I, 25 feet, I believe. It, either one wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. I, I guess that's that. what I don't understand. There's a lot of things pop out of the files in history that we don't understand. It's, them. <laughs> it's like it's a incorrect. mummy. You know. uh, any other questions for the applicant? Thank you, Dr. Gordon. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this application? If not, anyone speaking in opposition to it? Hmm? Uh, surely you're not speaking in opposition. No, not if you're going home tonight. So. Uh, there's no one speaking in opposition either. Then we'll close the hearing and open it for discussion among the board members. You have a uh, rough draft order in your packet that you can use if you choose to. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, any sir. communications on this? Any neighbors right uh, Not that I'm aware of. The packet you gave us earlier, Bruce, is there any communications in here relating to this? Proposal? Mm, well, there's a. You, you mean the, the packets? No, there's a case about self Portland and a variance that I was challenged in Superior Court, but it isn't necessarily related to this variance. It's probably okay. related to all variances. I just didn't know what was in here, and if, if we didn't get any letters or anything uh, objecting to the. No, no, we didn't. The deck. Okay. I guess the answer is no, John. Okay. Any other discussion? And on the face of it, it strikes me that this is one of those things which pop up from time to time that we have to deal with because it, there was an error made, and uh, unintentionally, on the part of the applicant at least, and uh, not a heck of a lot we can probably do about it, but somebody's got a different idea. Speak up or put it into a motion. <laughs> it appears as though we're leaning more and more to having surveys of all properties, which I certainly don't encourage, but with errors like this, it's, it's just showing that, that we need surveys to ascertain the uh, proper setbacks. Uh, it's unfortunate, but. Well, I think you were in the lead a year ago of trying to get us to do that, and we adopted that policy, and it's paid off a number of times, so you should well, take credit uh, for that. I've got something in your packets I pass out tonight that under, under communications, I'd like to discuss with you in relation to that. The hope would be that there isn't a board meeting five years from now that looks back and said, what were those bozos doing when uh, they approved this one? So, uh, is there somebody willing to make a motion to get this uh, addressed? Uh, 
I'll move for the granting of a variance of, help me out here. Uh, the variance is 13 feet from the required 30 on the rear property line and nine uh, feet. Nine feet. On the, on the left side. Left side. Was that the uh, the south side, the south west side of the property? East. Hmm? East. The southeast. East. 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 Yeah. I'm looking at your, your north here, so I'm saying that's okay. Oh, it's on the south side. Okay, I'm sorry. South south. And the reasons for that are the ones set forth in the draft uh, <laughs> approval we were given. Well. Excuse me? So the reasons for that would be the ones set forth in the uh, draft yeah. approval we were given. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? I see none and the variance is granted. Good luck in selling your house. Did you, did you want to make reference to the conclusions or did you not? That's what I just did. Okay. I yeah. pay attention, I guess. Uh, The next item on the agenda is communications. Are you here for recreation or did you have an item on the agenda I'm not aware of? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> it is the summer season, nothing good on TV, is there? <laughs> uh, next item is communications and... Uh, There's in TV. That means <laughs> yeah, well, it depends what channel you're on. No, we're good, I think we're that good. <laughs> uh, we have a packet that Bruce had put in front of us uh, in the beginning, which I hope you each have a copy of, uh, headed draft memorandum. And there's a couple of items in that packet that uh, we want to talk about at his request. Go ahead. Well, the first one is, a, is the draft memorandum to the uh, planning board for your review. Um, once you prove, prove what's here, then I can pass this on to the planning board for the next workshop. And we can go ahead with, with what we talked about at the, at the joint workshop, changing the variance criteria hardship to uh, practical difficulty. So you're asking the board to act on what you and the planning? Are... I'm just ask, asking that, that basically is, is the draft memorandum to the planning board okay with the, with the Board of Appeals, uh, with, the plan, with the Board of Appeals and other changes uh, that we've made under this under the ordinance, um, okay. okay. If it is, I'll send it on the planning board. <clears throat> Basically, all we did was replace the, the uh, undue hardship criteria with the practical difficulty um, for all variance applications. So if you look at the attached page, which is the change in the ordinance, uh, there's changes under item, what, two and three? Or three and four, depending on which. Well, one, one is replaced with, with, with the, 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 the stuff that's crossed out is the stuff that's gonna be eliminated and, and the ones underlined are, yeah. are added and the ones that's not underlined remain. So we replace hardship with practical difficulty, which we discussed at the meeting with the planning board and the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties changes or replaces the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Right. So if there's anybody who thinks that wasn't consistent with what we intended in our meeting with the planning board, then speak up. Seems okay to me. This is the this is the language from the state, great. Which is what we, one of our alternatives. We can't change the language, but we can okay. we can vote to change to change to, to adopt it in its whole in replace of the undue hardship. Well, I would say let the minutes record that the uh, zoning board approves both the cover letter and the proposed changes to the ordinance. Uh, unless somebody's going to stop me. Okay, consider that done. Move on. And just one comment, I would would appreciate any of the board's help uh, in bringing us through at any of the any of the hearings or public meetings that we have whether it be the chair or, or, or all the members which would be would be nice uh, for the support 
I assume you'll keep us informed as to dates. Yes, sir, I will. Okay. I think tonight's case with Dr. Owen and uh, Dr. Gordon is a, is a case in point where it's not a hardship but a practical difficulty. And the, the fault was, in fact, the town's a failure to, uh, to enforce its own ordinances. Second, Although, I, and that's one of those cases where you could have made a hardship case, I think, you know, one of the few. Yeah, not <laughs> Tear down your deck because somebody yeah, screwed up. Yeah. Not on a reasonable return basis. Mm -hmm. you know, he probably wouldn't hurt his, you know, if he cut his deck back by five feet, it wouldn't mm -hmm. hurt, hurt it a great deal. The, Go ahead, Bruce. The second item um, on, the, on, the, on the communications is, is uh, Goldstein versus the city of South Portland. It's, it's simply a case that was taken to court. Uh, against the Board of Appeals decision to grant a variance, and, and I thought it be, might be interesting for the board to read on. Oh, good. Thank you. This was just uh, last month, so. Yeah, it's recent. It, it, it gives you another reason why you really have to do something. <laughs> yeah. If we needed one, there is one, another one. The third item in your packet is, is uh, an example of what they call a sketch plan. Um, What's happening with a lot of towns, as it is, as is here, um, Class D surveys or mortgage inspections, as they call it now, a lot of towns has, have been requiring that, but, but the survey people that are doing them will make no claims to it, the accuracy of those Class Ds, and, and they don't really want them to be used for, for uh, Board of Appeals purposes, although they realize that does happen. Um, realizing that that's on the low end of the scale for cost and the fact that a, a full survey, which is the ideal situation, uh, is somewhat $2,000. Um, Delorier and Associates have come up with what they call a sketch plan, which is an example of what you got in, have in front of you. That runs in, in the vicinity of $400, and some towns are accepting this as the document that, that they want to see before their boards. Um, that I just wanted to share the information. I asked Mr. Uh, Fisher, who, who I talked to on the phone about this whole situation, uh, to, to just write me a little letter explaining exactly what it does for the applicant, and he, which he's done. And they will stand behind uh, the measurements they put on these plans uh, to the extent that if, if, if it goes before the Board of Appeals and there is an error down the road, that they'll stand behind their work, they'll guarantee. Uh, so it's not a survey, but it's a whole heck of a lot better than a class, class D mortgage inspection in that they, that they're, they do stand behind this, this uh, sketch plan. Uh, Deloria is not the only one that has this available. They call it a sketch plan. I don't know what other outfits call it, but uh, I know some other towns that are, are, haven't necessarily adopted this, but they push their applicants in this direction. Um, I just wanted to run by that, that by the board and see what what they feel. The, the the policy we adopted referred to a class D survey. The policy is yeah mortgage inspection, what they used to call a mm -hmm. class D. Yeah. And well, at the time we discussed that, as I recall, we realized that it it wasn't the final word on a survey, but that it vastly improved the situation that we found ourselves in so many times without overburdening the uh, applicants. It does do that. Yeah. But, but they won't back any of it. Yeah. It's, it's strictly done for title more than anything. Well, I'm certainly willing to you know, open this up for discussion tonight if you want, although I have to say that for myself, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be here next month. but. Uh, I would prefer to see this put on the agenda and, and have board members have a chance to look at what you've gotten in this letter from uh, the lawyer and uh, give some thought to this before we even consider revisiting our existing policy. But if the board members want to plunge ahead tonight, I'll certainly go along with that. I mean, this tied with a variance um, could get could politically be a, a problem, but tied with practical difficulty, it may mm -hmm. it may not. Be such a problem. Hmm. If you understand what I'm looking yeah. at. Can I ask you a question? These iron pipes, uh, do they guarantee that they're survey markers, or what's the import of saying iron pipe found? It, can those iron pipes be moved? Are they sunk in, con you know, nine feet of concrete or something, or up on the upper left? I was wondering 
people refer to these things as boundary markers or places from where boundaries can be measured. And I, I, I am going to confess I've always been somewhat... Uh, it, it, it's, you know, somebody drives an iron pipe into the, found, in the ground, I mean, how do you verify that that iron pipe is... Well, it's my, it's my, it's my impression from discussion that, that, that I had with uh, Jim Fisher that um, a mortgage inspection is based on what they find physically on the, on the ground, which is these iron pipes that may or may not be accurate, and, and the best information available on the local level through the town hall, where a sketch plan takes it one step further and verifies the, the pipes by going off the property and, and checking other, and actually maybe shooting some points. So it goes a step further, and that's why they're more comfortable with, with guaranteeing um, more accuracy to, to a sketch plan than they would a mortgage inspection, because the only reason for mortgage inspection is to make sure that the house is not in violation of any setbacks. That's the only intent of it. And once they find that information out, then they don't, they don't go any further. Um, so it's much more accurate in that respect. Will they stand by the, when they say this iron pipe, this iron pipe, uh, they're certifying that as, as a, an actual boundary marker and not somebody, somebody, not something somebody piled it, pounded it into the ground to uh, They'll, variance? I don't know whether they certified to that extent, but they will certify that the measurements that they place on the plan for the need for the variance, as, as, as you see here, are accurate based on the information that they gathered. And they won't do that on a mortgage inspection. In fact, they don't even put the measurement on there. You have to scale it off. That's why the other one costs $2,000, Bob. That's what they certify. They'll get the instruments out. Well, this is 400 here. This yeah, but. But Bob's question was, do they certify oh, okay. that this is accurate? And no, they don't, not at the $400 level. But at the $2,000 level, yes, they would. And they would probably set their own markers there. These old pins that are there, the iron pipes that are found, were done by someone else uh, 10, 20, 50 years ago. Joe, is it just an iron pipe that's pounded to the ground? Yes. Is it, how far down does it go? Is it, it three inches? Two, three feet. Two, three feet. Uh, I often wondered about uh, but somebody couldn't go out and just pound some few iron pipes no. and claim something. No, they've been there for a while. They've stayed there for a while. And normally they're, they're <clears throat> I don't know when they started using the rebob type uh, uh, pin with a cap on it with their name. Uh, there's a yellow cap as a survey marker. And that's, that's more recent. Um, and uh, it has the name of the surveyor and has, has a license number on it. And this is just coming to play. I'm going to guess 10 years ago. Bruce, are, are you uh, bringing this up in order that the board could consider the possibility of upgrading its current policy to another level? I'm bringing it up just so that the board will, will have the knowledge to, to understand that there is something available between a survey, a full survey and a mortgage inspection, mm -hmm. and what the board chooses to do with it is yet to be determined. Well, I would suggest to the board members that it would be wise for us to put this on a future agenda and uh, bring it up after you've had time to read the material and consider whether you want to do anything at all with it or just accept it as a useful upgrade and, if, and the current policy stays the same or whether you want to change the policy to reflect it. Uh, because there are some questions that ought to be asked and, and I think it probably ought to be done with advance notice and an agenda and advance opportunity for the members to consider the implications one way or the other. So there's no objection to that position. I think we'll, we'll do that. You want to put it on and as an agenda item? At uh, is there any other communications or other business to bring before the board? No, but are you going to put this on as an agenda item? Yes, the next we'd meeting? like, that's yeah. what I said, to put it on a future agenda item. I'm sorry, I always uh, have trouble hearing over here. You have the same thing over there, don't you, Joe? In the corner, yeah. Oh, what about this, uh, uh, what we've, we've approved uh, that uh, this, uh, in, this proposed amendment to the zoning ordinances, right? Yes. I stated a consensus to which no one objected, and so that's in the minutes. It's called a coup d'etat. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to be efficient. But, uh, that's all right. 
I just want to be sure that, that we're not discussing both these things. I have to pass out earphones here. I guess the acoustics really are killer in here. Mm -hmm. Any other business from the board members to bring before us? Uh, I repeat again, I will be out of state in the Northwest for three weeks, during which time the board next board meeting will occur. And uh, I understand you didn't miss me last time at all because Mr. Laprade did a superb job. So I hope you'll be available to do it again. And I'll see you folks in July. Thanks very much. It's a motion, second, and we are adjourned.